below. We lost some elevation. Joining me, Kevin Green, going to put it in perspective. So uh, we talked about how it seemed like most of the big positioning was around that 6,000, kind of that center of gravity kg, uh, 10 points. How big of a drift is that? Uh, not too much of a drift here, Oliver. Obviously, we saw a pretty decent flush uh, during the uh, session here today. That was more news driven. We did see some activity going into the 5960 puts early on in the session, but you did see a little bit of a covering of uh, those positions as well. We had kind of this V-shaped recovery from the from the downside here, and then we tried to retest that 6,000 level. Now, what I actually did find very interesting, right before that 6,000 level, there was an area of resistance that we saw on the uh, chart early in today's session here and we basically kind of faded off on that now this is the morning levels that we kind of see we have this megaphone type of pattern taking place you can look at it as a flag uh, potentially as well the bottom end of that channel for the most part has actually stayed intact i have not made any adjustments i just extended the line so uh, it seems like we do have a downtrend line or a, re a support area that has been able to hold the upper end resistance we've been breaking it a couple of times here and now we're basically breaking out trying to retest it you want to be able to hold this level kind of move back up we do have a little bit of pen risk sitting at that 6,000 level here but if we go to the intraday chart i think that one's actually very interesting because if you're looking at this net neutral level right this flip line that we usually have uh on the histogram you can see 59.85 would be kind of that dealer net neutral level here which the market could attract itself to it seems like we're kind of inching our way towards that level right now mm. So, uh, all right, if uh, it doesn't bounce back, if we don't get back into our six, uh, then at what point does it get scary? Is it even visible on the chart? Like 59.70, how big of a deal? Like what kind of downside does that open up uh, compared to the support that's trailing still? Well, we saw some buyers actually stepping in, so it's holding up fairly well. Actually, I don't think, uh, you know, if you're looking at it from a, a, a broader perspective here, 5880 is where I would get a little bit concerned. We're nowhere near that right now. So I think we still have some wiggle room. If we're looking at the open interest chart, we actually are still within that, um, you know, that wedge pattern that we've been kind of talking about here. Now, uh, we can kind of get to some of the candle patterns a little bit later, but I'm not too concerned. Even if we did see a little bit more of a downside pull, uh, pull today, uh, we remained at those lows. I wouldn't have been really that concerned. A couple of things that are still a little, uh, some bright spots here for bulls to put it in perspective. Volume, even though we saw that pullback earlier, volume has been lighter on the downside move. And if we even in the candle here today, which is probably going to be a hanging man candle, which is a reversal candle, it's on low volume though. It wasn't a lot of conviction of sellers kind of stepping in here. We did see a buy the dip type of mentality when you're looking at Google, when you're looking at Apple for the most part. So there's still some bright spots there. It wasn't like we just saw you know a rapid amount of just a deleveraging in the market and liquidity for the most part still looks good so this is all it's still bullish it's just a pullback once again i would say more compression range bound for the most part here we're still looking decent seems to me the scariest thing on the chart is the gap from basically election night that uh pushed us through that whole old range uh from uh october through the 58 uh, up through to the 59 so uh yeah there you go boom gap one as highlighted by mr kg here yeah yeah so uh this if you were going to be a, bull, a bear and you say okay maybe we do have a little bit of a pullback here i try to highlight a couple of areas we kind of have maybe a, a shooting star pattern that's that last green candle that we have on the right hand side there uh -huh. maybe you can make a debate about that that could be a topping pattern i know the next one is going to be a spinning top neutral the somewhat bull, uh, bearish if you're kind of looking at a, the the end of a trend to the upside today we have that hanging man uh, pattern as well so two out of the three for the most part you could say uh is kind of bearish and you still have those gaps we have gap two and then we have gap one gap two sitting at around 59.40 uh below that uh, negative gamma level that we kind of talked about on that five, uh, that three-day uh chart there and then we have that massive gap to the downside uh and oliver for me uh when i kind of look at charts a, a massive gap sometimes does get filled or at least tested. And so I'm just kind of preparing for that. I don't know when, I don't know how it's going to really happen, but I would just be mindful. And if we continue to see a drop off in volume, even if we have these compressed type of days, that does also signify that we may have some exhaustion. I'm not concerned about it yet, but something to be on the, on the radar or if liquidity starts to dry up, that's where we could have a, a little bit of a reversal. 
once again, I'm not trying to call a top here, but the patterns are the patterns. And it looks like, uh, you know, we're, we need a new narrative. And I'm not sure if tomorrow is going to be that new narrative when it comes to inflation. We got to be on the radar for that one. That could actually mm-hmm. create maybe a little bit of selling pressure if it comes in fairly hot uh, in some uh, some respects. And if it's better than expected, then we could continue the trend of the upside and you can kind of negate uh, some of these uh, bearish patterns that we uh, just highlighted here. For sure. Seems to me like the odds of it being a positive catalyst are lower than it being a um, negative catalyst. But, of course, to your point, it could go either way. I mean, if we, we get a nice, cool print, that'd be a beauty um, to give us kind of a fresh, uh, you know, angle on this. Uh, all right, so hopefully we, we mine the gaps. Uh, if you're bearish, then maybe you, if you're really aggressive, uh, then you aim for the kind of older October gap, the bigger one. If you're looking to just take a little shorty trade, then maybe that kind of second gap, the thinner one. Uh, And then in terms of the other stuff we talked about, like liquidity, all that, all those things are normal right now. None of this is like, um, you know, I think to the downside, it still has to be described as speculative for the most part. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say um, if you're a bear in this market right now. I mean, there's a lot that's to be bullish about. I think if sure. you are trying to encourage a pullback, which I wouldn't say, you know, label somebody yeah, as a just bear. Yeah, thinking about that, levels. Yeah, then I would say uh, you may have a couple of things that are in your favor here right now, um, as, as we kind of talked about there. But the liquidity, liquidity looks good. Volume, it's going to be a little bit deceiving, Oliver, from a technical standpoint, because you had to vent risk. So it's going to kind of. Uh, create an outsized volume candle for the next couple of you know trading sessions basically after the election. So you gotta also kind of take that with a grain of salt. The last thing I will say though, I found very interesting today. I had a little bit of a flashback to 2017, 2018. With that TikTok news that came out today, what happened? We saw an immediate sell-off of Meta. Meta was looking very strong to start the session and completely reversed itself after that news that uh, they're going to try to block that deal. And it obviously Snap uh, sold off and things of that nature. Look, we're in a new, we're going to be in a new environment. We have a new administration. If you remember the last time, a lot of policy, a lot of news just hit the wire on on X or now it's going to be truth social and it will create some intraday vol. So if today was kind of your wake up call that you need to have a news feed up while you're trading and not mm, just the yeah. technicals, today was the day because this is something that we're going to have to get used to over the next couple of uh, of years right now. For sure. Uh, for companies on a specific level too, that's a really good reminder right. uh, that uh, you know we will have to stay attuned because uh, the former president was not shy to target specific companies. So in this case, it was kind of like the knock-on effect from the TikTok stuff. But yeah, who knows? He could start, uh, you know, tweeting out, calling out businesses again. So, uh, all right. Kind of fun times for traders. Appreciate it. Thanks, KG.